Hi, my name's Garrick. I'm a music therapist in the UK. Uh, this video is the wrap up to the Beyond mini series that uh, I streamed over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash W6. In this video, we cover the journal paper from Approaches that was written by Becky White in 2015. And it's called, What Sounds Can You Make a Case Study of a Music Therapy Group for children with autism, learning disabilities, and challenging behaviours. The reference for the paper is in UE Harvard format in the description as always. This paper was a really interesting read. It doesn't explicitly cover the group dynamics of the case study, but we try and fill in the gaps where we can using Beyond's lens and ideas to sort of establish some understanding of what might be going on. As I've said, the paper is fascinating and Becky White Thank you for writing this. Thank you, Approaches, for being uh, open access online journal. It would be really wonderful to read this case study with the additional data of the group dynamics and group interactions going on and how it influences and feeds into the individual goals that each of the children has. But thank you for coming along with me on this Beyond Mini series. I hope you've found it informative. I hope you've enjoyed it. The next series is Yalom and that will be coming out soon. But in the meantime, here is Becky White's paper from 2015. So this is the paper, it's from Approaches, which is an open source journal of music therapy. Um, it's from 2015, so it's not actually that old. Um, it's not like the most recent. Well, actually it might be the most recent. <laughs> um, it's not super recent, but it's not, you know, we're not looking at 1980s. Um, it, it's reasonably current. So children with autism have historically received individual music therapy sessions. However, they can also benefit from small group work where they can have a shared musical experience. This case study describes a practical example of a group of children with autism who also have learning disabilities and challenging behavior, combining psychodynamic music therapy with a behavioral approach teach. On one hand, my therapeutic stance is influenced by psychoanalytic writings that draw on understanding that music can recreate mother-infant interactions and holding and containing environments. Okay, so that's really useful. We are working with a paper that somewhat resembles the kind of ideas that we are thinking about, the kind of ideas we're working with. On the other hand, teaches a behavioral system employed by schools in which strategies and techniques are used to adapt to the environment and enable children with autism to learn and develop. The system uses photographs and visual communication to aid children in understanding their environment and depends on schedules and routines to help children learn. The case study describes how the music therapy group provides an opportunity for the children to interact socially, further developing their communication and social interaction skills. We know what the group, uh, the group aim is. The group aim is for the children to interact socially, develop their communication and social interaction skills. This is the reason that the group exists. Essentially, the group's task, um, if we're thinking about it in Beyond's terms, the group's task is to do communication and social interaction. Then we're on to sort of introduction and lit uh, review. This case study is based on an unpublished MA dissertation. Groups provide a unique and beneficial environment in which children can interact with peers and adults through music. Uh, in the past, it has been relatively unusual for children with autism to attend groups, and most historic case studies describe individual sessions. Yep, this way, this this may well be true. I wonder why it's been um, a decision for children with autism to be um, to have individual music therapy. There might be some really interesting uh, opinions or ideas that have become um, sort of systematized. Or systemic um, that aren't necessarily uh, true or accurate or maybe it's the case that you know when it comes to assessing clients and assessing their appropriateness or the appropriateness of group uh, therapy for them uh, the, the therapist deems that it isn't necessarily beneficial for them groups how, however can also provide an important space for the development of social skills and there are some examples of case studies Nordoff and Robbins also worked with children in groups and described groups as having a powerful uniting effect. Yeah, so this would be the idea of a group having a powerful uniting effect would be beyond sort of idealized work group, the sort of self-actualized form of, of a group. Alvin and Warwick uh, worked with a group of autistic and normally developing boys. 
working on integration and social integration with peers. Walsh Stewart ran a group for children with autism, which used psychodynamic music therapy in combination with a teach program, describing how the children developed further communication skills. All of these groups and others demonstrate the usefulness of group work for children with autism in that they can benefit children in a variety of areas such as attention span, communication, language development, and social interaction. The clinical work presented in this case study was developmentally and psychoanalytically informed, drawing on child development and psychoanalytic ideas such as the writings of Klein, Priestley, Winnicott and Alvarez. Okay, school and music therapy context. UK residential schools referred by local education authorities because they're not benefiting from home and day school environments or their behaviours are too difficult to manage. Music therapy has always been part of the school. A variety of approaches have been applied, including creative, social and behavioural. The researcher wasn't in, uh, employed for three days a week at the school and provided sessions for children with music therapy on their statement of special educational needs. Uh, the group members. The aim of the music therapy group was to focus on their communication and social interaction skills, developing individual objects, objectives for each child. Two boys and two girls. All of the attendees, apart from one, were 24-hour residential care at school. Ray was 14 years old and had extremes of anxiety. He would often hit out and become highly agitated if he did not understand the situation. He had made good progress in school using PEX, a picture symbol communication exchange system. He had good receptive language skills and some expressive language skills on a two to three word level. Ray used individual teach schedule to guide him around the school and residential home, which reduced his anxiety. He often related well to staff and sought out interaction with staff he liked. However, at other times he was isolated and would withdraw from others around him choosing not to communicate. Oscar was 15, seemed relatively settled, related well to staff and other children, anxiety less pronounced than Ray, often self-regulated, had expressive and receptive language skills on two to three word level, referred to encourage more interaction and help him initiate more for himself in less structured situations. Catherine was age 14 and had good receptive and expressive language on a two to three word level, often becomes anxious about moving from one part of the school to the next. She would sit on the floor and refuse to move and difficult to motivate her to move around the school. She responded well to music and to age transitions, she would be given an iPod as a reward. Anna was 15, a day student, fewer challenging behaviours, very passive, did not initiate communication. Withdrawing into physical movements such as rocking or tapping objects on her teeth, she was extremely silent, hardly used her voice to make sounds or communicate, did not seek out interaction with staff or other children and would sit for long hours engaged in one activity, such as tapping her fingers. The group ran for 26 weeks, so that's like two thirds of a school year. Three members of staff, including the class teacher, attended the groups. The members of staff became a part of the Bull and Roberts model of co-working and became part of the reflective process. And the class teacher was the consistent reflective assistant. A simple repetitive format for the sessions. So the children would know what to expect each time they came to the therapy. A holding containing environment was created for this group. The time was always the same. The instruments, I only changed little. Okay, a lot of sort of basic music therapy stuff consistency containing structure and using goodbye uh, hello and goodbye songs to sort of bookend the sessions the first five sessions were assessment sessions essentially and developed individual objectives for each of the kids beginning of therapy sessions seven to eleven the cool sentence is here <laughs> there was a very flat uncreative feeling of the seventh session. Even though there was a lot of activity, the children were waiting for my direction and it seemed hard to find creativity and playfulness during the music making. Alvarez considers the absence of play in children with autism and how this can manifest itself in the couch transference of the therapist through feelings of boredom. I recognize this feeling in myself, although I would describe it more as feeling stuck and uncreative. Uh, I have experienced this at other times when working with people with autism and recognizing the feeling. The group was stuck and stilted and I needed to find a way to create connections and creativity and help the group members initiate and become enlivened. What do we know about groups from beyond this basis? Well, I'm thinking that this group seems to be not active. Why is it? If the therapist is taking a non-directive role, then is the group looking for a leader? Or is the group incapable of action without a leader to direct? 
If the children are used to being in school environments where the adult in the room is the leader, so teachers, they may be waiting to be directed or have something done unto them rather than self-generating direction or task or action. So maybe this is sort of a pre-period before Beyond's sort of basic assumption groups start to occur. This is the pre-leader selection or leader development, leader dynamic. And maybe uh, in a group that was highly communicative, they would ask the therapist why the therapist isn't directing. Why is the therapist not doing unto? Why is the therapist not acting as leader. So there's a thought. Maybe we're in a, this like sort of pre-leader form where the, the, the group does not have a task to attend to um, or requires direction which is not being given. The group was a brand new situation to the children, so they need time to settle and get used to the sessions. In addition, they were used to being directed by adults and told what to do. I deliberately wanted to create a space in which they were not directed, but had the freedom to respond how they wished. I thought this would create a good alternative space to the classroom and create opportunities for the children to respond and interact in ways which they were not doing in other settings. I also felt it was important to define the music therapy service as providing a different sort of space from that of the highly structured classroom. This idea was well supported in the school and music therapy was valued for providing a freer space in which the children could creatively and spontaneously respond. So White has a feeling here or is gesturing towards this idea that the children are looking to the therapist as a leader at the moment and they are not leading. The, th the therapist is not being directive, which one would think would eventually prompt the development of the leader selection dynamic. It took around two months for children to start to interact, make choices and initiate for themselves. In session eight, there was a shift in their responsiveness. Ray started to vocalize more and initiate picking up the instruments and Anna also started to vocalize more, making high-pitched melodic phrases. I think it's also important to highlight that the theoretical foundation here or the orientation is to create a space of authentic action. It's looking to engage and support completely free, creative and spontaneous action that the, the kids may not be able to exhibit. Uh, anywhere else. I mean, I guess I'm thinking more existentially humanistic there, but I, actually and psychodynamically, but looking to make the space as free as possible for, for authenticity. Throughout sessions 12 to 15, the children seem to increase their amount of vocalizing week by week, particularly interested in the quality of responses. I looked for any increases in the children's vocalizing happening at the same time as my improvised music. Talked to some of the classroom staff about the meaning behind their vocalizations. For some of these children, an increase in vocalization could mean more engagement with the therapy, and for others, it could mean less engagement. Sometimes musicking um, can be sort of a shield or a screen or a defense against in authentic engagement. Are they so formulaic that perhaps the formulaicness of response from the client can gesture that they're not truly engaging with the material or the the stuff that you're you're sort of prompting them with. It's one of those things where it helps so much more to be in the room. Uh, Catherine became very motivated to walk to the room and in fact she was the first one to arrive in session 19. This was the child who did not want to transfer between sessions. Transitioning was was difficult or um, or just not something that she wanted to do. It takes sev taken several weeks to come on time and get used to the idea of attending. Again, like you're working with learning difficulties and, and um, autistic children, like things take time uh, to, to, to bed in. In session 16, she initiated reaching out for the drum and played before the others arrived. As I sang hello, she moved her upper body to the music as if dancing in her chair. She also made tiny rhythmic vocal sounds to the fast pulse of the music. Later in the session, she picked up the shakers and hit them together in a rhythm consisting of two crotchets and a quaver. So, I don't know if you can even pick that up on the mic. Assuming there isn't a quaver rest. Simultaneously, Oscar started to play in a more sustained manner on the guero. Catherine's playing seemed to encourage Oscar. Gradually, the group started to take more responsibility and initiate activities for themselves. This was as simple as picking up instruments for themselves or picking up the bag 
to pack away the instruments. In session 21, every, everyone in the group spontaneously helped to pack away the instruments. Staff and students together, there was a real feeling of togetherness and I wrote my clinical notes. Packing away has become a real joint event with everybody taking part spontaneously. It would be so interesting here to have the sequence of events and the therapist's feelings about them or or interpretations or, or you know just therapist data here is commented that catherine's playing seemed to encourage oscar is this catherine taking a leader role is, or do beyond's theories here not hold up without more data we we couldn't know but it would be so interesting to see if here is a sort of gap in beyond's thinking or whether whether this group has seemingly skipped straight to work group in which case the data that would be interesting would be like sessions 12 to 21. This would be the interesting data where we might see basic assumption stuff happening, leader selection happening, and then this work group dynamic in session 16. So so maybe the interesting stuff is like 8 to 15, and then 16 to 21, this sort of more work group dynamic is happening. There's a period of time in this case study where it could be really interesting to apply Beyond's theories, if, if only academically, if only to, to sort of go, well, okay, this is a lens that we could view this through and then decide if it's useful. Over the last period of therapy, there was a very hot weather spell which affected everyone. The effect on everyone was tangible. Group members moved around at a slower pace and it was more difficult to concentrate. During session 22, the students were very quiet and did not interact much as if each one was trying to find an individual way of coping with the heat. I used a visual and verbal countdown to communicate the end of therapy. The countdown was used three weeks before finishing date. Figure four shows the photograph countdown with pictures of myself for each remaining session. The first time I used the countdown, there was a notable decrease in responses from some of the students. Since I was interested in the number of responses the children made at different times in the therapy and what this could tell me about how they were experiencing music therapy, I asked the question, did less vocalizing mean they were more or less engaged? For example, in Anna's case, less vocalizing did seem to indicate that she was less engaged, since in the middle period of therapy, she had been very vocal in response to other sounds in the room. The staff and I felt sad to be finishing the work, and this may have had an effect on the children. So yeah, the, the, the how you feel as a therapist change, changes the course of the session. It will influence what you say, what you play, um, how you physically act, move, hold, Hold yourself. During the last session, certificates were given out to each individual stating what they had achieved during the group. This generates a general feeling of excitement and the children seemed to recognize this different activity to the usual goodbye routine of singing to each other was taking place. After Catherine had been given her certificate, she clapped spontaneously and there was a positive feeling between everyone in the room. This seemed like an important moment for the group. We were acknowledging that the children had achieved something in coming to the sessions for the whole school year and that the staff and children had been able to relate together through improvised music making. So what we'll do now, because we're thinking about Beyond, we're thinking about group theory, we're not thinking about the individuals, I'm going to skim this and see whether, and, and, and try and find uh, the aspects of where the author is talking about the group as a whole rather than the individuals. Obviously individual like client outcome is really important, that's the whole purpose of group, but we're looking at group dynamics. So these are all individual outcomes. Um, it would be really interesting. I would love a paragraph maybe on the development of the group interactions as a sort of, I mean, I, and maybe there weren't any, and that's why it's so light, light in terms of uh, the writing here. I would love a few paragraphs on sort of how the group functioned over time, as well as the individual uh, sort of uh, case study breakdowns of, 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 the, uh, of the children attending. Other case studies in music therapy literature suggest that music therapy can encourage young children with autism to use their voices for communication. In this case, I vividly remember a moment in a session where I was singing a, a hello to her and she suddenly looked at me straight in the eyes and vocalized. And I seemed to realize at that moment that I was singing to her and her sounds could have an impact on me. Pace and timing and contours I used to sing to Anna reflected her sounds movements and this gained her attention. This links two points. Spontaneous music making can remodel early mother-infant interactions. Because of the recreation of the early mother-infant interactions, Anna su suddenly seemed more aware of herself and of me. This case study has described a music therapy group for children with autism and additional diagnosis. 
Through a practical example of a group for children with autism, an additional diagnosis of this paper shows that group experiences can be positive and provide opportunities for development of individual goals in social interaction and communication. In terms of increasing social interaction and communication, I agree. One assumes that the interactions and communications developed from basic to slightly more complex over time. That would be the hope. And I think it would be really interesting to see the, the, the group dynamics um, and how the group dynamics affected the individual goals in social interaction and communication. Because these, these things aren't linear. The developments that you see aren't linear in the same way that social interactions and relationships developing aren't linear. Like therapy is is such a non-linear process you you make progress and then you make then you have setbacks and tangent off to one in one direction there isn't even the reason that you went to therapy in the first place or you know not one of your original clinical goals and then you come back to the the main path again and then you set back and then you go forward and it would be so interesting to see how the group dynamic played a part in the development for social interaction and communication but that's obviously not the focus of of what the author's going for, which is fine. We can we can fill in a few blanks, but not enough to make like really compelling statements. But it gives us practice into, okay, so let's imagine this group here like we did in the first, maybe we have this pre-leader thing. And then maybe there are some series of interactions where a leader was selected and it transitioned from this basic assumption to a work group. And maybe, Beyond's theory just isn't applicable here. Maybe it isn't useful. And there is a different set of group theories that would be more appropriate. And I think that's the joy of, of sort of the more integrative model of finding the lenses and seeing seeing what they show you. This case study has been theoretically influenced by psychoanalytic analytic writings, drawing on the understanding that music can recreate mother-infant interactions. The case study also shows how combining the behavioral approach of teach with psychoanalytic ideas can be a useful approach than working with children with autism. Here's the paragraph that I wanted, or at least the reason that the paragraph doesn't exist. I focused on each child and how they responded as individuals within the group. I have not described in detail group interactional processes since the objective of this clinical work was to focus on individual educational objectives, which I listed earlier. Despite the methodological weakness of this case study, I hope to have shown that music therapy groups have, quite, have the potential to provide a unique and beneficial environment for children with autism, providing an opportunity for them to interact with peers and adults through music. In the case study, the children were most responsive during the middle period of the therapy, this was a time when the routine of the school year was mostly most firmly established. Perhaps this is the most productive point in the school year, in the middle of the year when everyone has got to know each other and the classes are most established. That's a really interesting um, parallel to to draw to to school productivity as well as sort of therapeutic productivity, um, especially when the, the when the environment is the school. Um, that's a really interesting sort of parallel to, to, to draw. Would Again, would love to see if like any research in, in that area has been done, whether the most productive part of the year is the middle. Um, and is it to do with social interactions being established? Who knows? The children seem to relate strongly to the music, instruments and safe space of the therapy room being keen and motivated to come and often reluctant to leave. They also appeared to respond to each other many times during the group work. There was a tangible feeling of group togetherness. This paper shows how music therapy groups can create a very different experience for children with autism who are often isolated and unable to connect with others because of the non-verbal element and focus on communication through music. Music therapy groups can bring a different dimension for individuals who struggle in the classroom with their peers and give them the opportunity to develop communication and social interaction skills and connect and form relationship with others. I think this has been a really interesting paper. Uh, thank you, Approaches, for being online open access, as all journals should be. Thank you, Becky White, for doing this this paper. Really interesting, really fascinating. Please write the other paper, I beg you. Yalom next. Yalom has some really cool group theory. I say cool. Re really interesting group, <laughs> group therapy uh, sort of theory. And yeah, I would, I would really like to reacquaint myself with some of Yalom's thinkings. Thanks for watching the video. If you found this helpful or enjoyed learning along with me, then uh, please feel free to like, uh, drop a comment, even subscribe if you want. I stream on Twitch on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7.45 p.m. 
uh, GMT UTC. So that's UK time. And if you have any questions or you want to suggest any topics, then feel free to uh, drop a comment in the in the comments or in the Twitch chat, or you can uh, find me on Twitter at Garrick W6. Thanks again, and I will see you next time. Uh, Winnicott's Klein Alvarez and Stern. Hey, Stern 1985. I'm so unnecessarily excited about the prospect of that existing.